in your career, you only get to speak twice at Eco Summit London, once on your way up in your career and once on the way down. So it's great to be back. <laughs> so thank you for the invitation. I've also been honored to speak at the Eco Summit in Berlin as well. So uh, it's, a, it's a hat trick. Um, so our panel today is talking about corporate venture capital. And as a, as a startup, how do you get money from a, from a corporate venturer? Um, but before we get on to that, we probably should talk about whether it makes sense in the first place to, to even consider it and what are the pros and cons. So we've got half an hour with a very experienced and distinguished panel who I'm going to ask to introduce themselves. Neil. Uh, I'm Neil Foster. I'm a, uh, I, I'm a lawyer. Um, I've done 30 to 40 corporate venture capital deals. I'm on Tim's advisory board at Global Corporate Venturing, which is why Tim asked me to be on this panel. Hello, I'm Peter Mikovets, uh, Managing Director of Inbank Capital. It's a venture capital arm of Chess Utility. I've done one deal. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Michael, Michael Lochholzer with Siemens Venture Capital. I'm the managing partner for the Energy Fund there. Um, in my history, I was a pure financial investor as well as a corporate investor. And uh, I'm not Christoph Ostermann, still. <laughs> it hasn't changed. Uh, I'm, my name is Oliver Koch, and I'm the Managing Director of Sun Battery, and we have a corporate investor being Chess, Invent Capital. Thank you. So just to summarize, we've got two corporate venture capitalists, a portfolio company that one of them's invested in, and a lawyer who's done an awful lot of deals and has uh, seen, seen a lot over the, over the years doing that. Uh, I'm Tim Lafferty. Global Corporate Venturing is a magazine and news source about corporate venturing. And we run events as well, and we've tracked about 5,000 deals over five years involving corporates. So we've seen quite a lot of um, you know, trends over the years that uh, we might come on to in a minute. But um, So what I'd like to do, just as a quick poll, who in here is um, a startup that's <coughs> considering raising capital in the next, say, 12 to 18 months? Yeah. OK, that's a lot of big proportion. OK. Put your hands up again if you're considering some of that capital might come from a corporate. Mm -hmm. That's most probably. There's a few that are not. So those who didn't put their hands up, who thinks they probably wouldn't want to take money from a corporate? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Nobody. So Nobody. They're, okay. so they're, everyone's out, they're okay. outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we might change your mind over the next half an hour on that one. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, if, if we may, um, when you are thinking about raising money from a corporate, what, what sort of things should you consider? Is it always a good idea? Are there pros and cons, things to watch out for? Anyone want to take that to start with? Don't you, come on then, Neil. Um, one of the key issues in this sector is follow-on fundraising, and one of the key issues in corporate venture capital is follow-on fundraising. And so... Um, it's, e it's even more important in this sector. The reason for that is there's actually quite a lot of startup money at the moment um, in, um, in clean tech areas, but there isn't necessarily the follow-on uh, funding. And because of the life cycles of clean tech businesses, you need follow-on fun fundraising. Um, now, corporates, um, if I can be slightly controversial, um, don't always have the best record in following on. Um, they sometimes have a change of CFO or... CTO or CEO, and they can change their strategy. So one of the key things, I think, is to ensure, or, to, or at least maximize your chances of getting follow-on fundraising from the corporates. OK. Thank you. So a couple of people who have done deals, what, what would you s recommend uh, for, for startups when they're, when they're thinking of raising venture capital from you? Yeah, if I may um, add to it, uh, we at Inman combine the best from two very different worlds. One world of big corporation, which is the key strategic investor behind us, which is strong balance sheet, uh, smart engineers, assets all around uh, you know, our region and the client base. Uh, and secondly, fast decision process of separate entity being invent capital, which is on board our motivation to strike deals and make money. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is, these are the two worlds we combine. And, uh, so I would encourage uh, I would encourage startups to to approach us because uh, in addition to the flexibility which is very similar or the same as as normal venture traditional venture capital firm we we, we offer 
piloting of their ideas on the assets, testing the ideas um, uh, on the client base, maybe not investing in the first phase, but uh, maybe a little bit later while we see how they are doing and how can we help. So that's, that would be my... So it's not just uh, about the money, it's how you can, you can yeah, help we can, in another Yeah, ones. we can help in the first place and then invest in maybe mm. at the right time. Yeah. Mike, how do you help startups? Of, of course, I'm also biased, I have yeah. to say. <laughs> um, but no, no, seriously speaking, um, <coughs> as I was um, before joining uh, Siemens Venture, uh, a pure financial investor, I think uh, being in the shoes of a, of a startup um, a CEO um, or the, the fundraising guys, um, I would consider what kind of market am I in? Um, I think one big element of help, I would think, looking at a corporate um, venture arm is, um, if you're in a market where a corporate helps you tremendously to get into the market. Um, so industrial environments, for example. Um, you might have the smartest products whatsoever, um, but will any kind of an automotive manufacturer let you, a startup company with 20, 10, 30, 50 people, get on the heart and soul of the manufacturing uh, floor there? Um, I think it's a tremendously diff difficult job. If you ride on the back uh, or in partnership in this context, with a corporate, I think that's of immense help. Um, so I think one of the elements really is, um, is there a chance for partnering up um, and going into a market which would be, would be quicker? And that, when I was a pure financial investor, was one of the elements I liked very much. And I, I really also saw that with the help of the corporate, you can get quicker into the market. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ideas. Thanks. So Oliver, how did Invent Capital help? And, and I agree with, with Michael here. Um, that, that is exactly the point. When you look at, okay, raising money from a VC, raising money from a corporate investor, um, both give you money, so that's equal. But then, you know, what other things do you get from each, each partner? And VCs will give you lots of contacts to raise more capital. They will have other portfolio companies to, to work with, and that is great. What Inven has done for us has opened the door to a completely new world which we hadn't seen before, and that is the world of the big utilities, mm. which the VCs are normally not part of, um, and they provide that market access. There are millions of customers there which we otherwise wouldn't be able to get to. Mm. Um, so, so there's clearly an added benefit there um, through the investment we received. Okay. Neil, I sometimes hear from <coughs> startups that they're actually a little bit sometimes wary of approaching corporates for various reasons there scared their IP might get <coughs> stolen or they might get smothered by corporate love or it might all be too slow. What's your, been your, your experience having seen some of these? Are, are, are those fears justified sometimes? I, I think the fears are justified. I think the fears are justified but they can be dealt with. And so, um, you know, having too much access, the large company, the, the global corporates investing and having access to that IP and that R&D, that shouldn't happen. They should be, they, they will take a board seats, but they shouldn't see everything. They shouldn't get too close. Um, because strategic investors want a strategic angle, very often they'll have their business unit sponsoring and investments. They want to get close, they're interested. How can I help? How can I help and get closer? And that's a mistake, actually. It's mm. not good for the corporate, mm. the large corporate. It's certainly not good for the portfolio company as well. And I know that Siemens and, and others that have been doing this for longer than most. Um, have techniques of making sure that they're not killing their, their young, mm. um, which is absolutely uh, vital mm. in my, in my mm. view. Mm. Okay. To, to jump in here, that's, I think, the reason why, um, in our case, we would never let um, somebody from the business unit sit on a board, um, also to protect the guy of the business unit. Just imagine you're sitting um, in your boardroom discussing business, um, and if I'm conflicted talking about, for example, if you talk about different customers you have, if I'm an operational guy, I would have to leave all the time the, the boardroom. So what, what does it make sense? Um, that's why we have this clear separation between the, the yeah, institutional investor on the one hand and the operational guys. And I recommend, for example, setting up an advisory committee, a technical advisory committee, where you then can pull perhaps not only one customer, uh, you can pull a, a Siemens as well as a Schneider or ABB, to get um, yeah, input, what kind of, of product roadmap steps should be there, stuff like this. Another fear I hear sometimes is that working with one corporate might limit you in some ways to have other competitive corporates as customers, or it might limit your exit. What would you say to that? Anyone? Example, um, <laughs> uh, if, if a company has a, a tremendously good product, <coughs> 
Um, it might be the case that our guys uh, in the operation would prefer to be the only uh, corporation partner in this industry vertical. Mm. But if the product is outstanding and very good, what's the alternative? Either you cooperate or don't cooperate. Mm. So I, I don't see this, this argument that strong, I have to say. Mm. Was it a worry for you, Oliver, when you, when you took, took the shilling? It, it was a worry in the sense when we, when we looked at which corporate to go with, those thoughts were, were, were definitely part of, of, of our, th our thought process. Um, so, so indeed, that, that was indeed very, very important to say, where do we find someone? And this is when, when you talk about how to manage this process, as you described at the beginning, um, there's ways how you can deal with this, there's different mechanisms, but I think that the most important mechanism is, before you even start talking, is which corporates do you actually want to talk with? Where do you have the strategic alignment? Where is the conflict of interest very significant? Are there others where it's not? So we have talked to other corporates, didn't want to go with those corporates. With Invent was a different story where we felt a high degree of, of overlap in terms of strategy and also managing those potential fears. Mm -hmm. So how did, how did you tell the story of how that relationship came about? Where did it start and how did you sort of develop it until you finally got the money? <laughs> really bizarre place. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> Eco Summit Berlin. Really? Yeah. <laughs> there you go, you're in the right place. Yeah. So, so I think you're best to, to, to tell that story. Yeah, we, yeah, we saw we were following uh, startups for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we saw Christoph uh, um, uh, speaking. We liked that guy. We took a note, and then we, you know, did that a business and so forth. But then, basically, once we find out that there is this uh, financing round actually opened, mm -hmm. uh, we basically met those guys in Bertolt Street uh, at the end of March uh, this year. Um, and the chemistry started to work from the first second we, we, we met, and we, we met all the whole management team and, and so forth. And in, in, in the first week of July, we basically signed a whole uh, deal. So, so, so the Eco Summit was this one in October? Yeah. It actually was the previous year where we saw Christopher for the first time, but uh, but then it kind of you know kind of everything was kind of disappeared, and then the, the real action came in March in March this year where we where we met those guys. Okay. And so it was what know. 18 months or so before you from first meeting or actually yeah maybe but uh, but the real real negotiation started started and the real interest we we kind of uh, provided was march this year mm -hmm. yeah. and then the investment was in july yeah. i'm just trying to get a sense of you know when when do you need to start to talk to a, a corporate because you know, decision making oh, it is actually very now to be a little bit slower than the traditional uh, that's, that's the again you have to s set it up uh, Again, there are good and bad companies everywhere uh, mm. in the venture capital world and, and, and in the other industries, right? Mm. So in our, in our situation, you have to set it up correctly from the first day. Yeah? Mm. You have to have a clear, clear mandate from your key investor being, mm. being, being chance. You need to know, you know your freedom and, and, and make sure you are independent. Mm. Uh, and uh, we, have, we strike a great deal with, 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 with Chess. We are independent uh, venture capital firm. We invest into firms Chess probably don't like as well. You know, it's really, it's not like, so both. So they mm. like and they don't like. So, mm. so it's really this, this mm. very special, uh, special relationship you need to set up from the very beginning so you can go for something which makes sense uh, for you and where you want to make money mm. and, and mm. help as much as possible. Okay. So um, what was it about what Sun and Battery does that fitted um, your strategic goals as a, as a utility? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, decentralized generation is a big topic. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and Chaz and uh, RWE and Waterfall, Eon, they are suffering, right? Price mm -hmm. going down, decentralized generation going up, uh, and so forth. So, uh, so yeah, investing into, into area of decentralized generation actually makes sense because it's going to be here anyway. Uh, and uh, and that was the, you know strategically it makes perfect sense now. Mm -hmm. And then when we look at the this arena and find Zone and Battery, Zone Battery was from which you know which is a great product which actually works. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a go-to-market strategy which actually works because they are increasing their sales 100% annually year to year, and they have a great uh, founders team with you know two guys who have done this you know for some time worked hard as I said chemistry between them awesome. Uh, one sales guy, another technical guy, and they 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 they, they brought this culture into this firm and built it very well from mm. the very beginning. So, mm. so so all these three components uh, uh, made perfect sense and strategically yes. So we we, we did a deal. Okay. 
The flip side to that, obviously, is is our internal thinking. Okay, is when when we started talking to Inven, um, internally discussing, do we want to have a corporate investor? First question: Do we want to have a corporate investor which uh, is a potential exit candidate? Who knows? Um, do we want to have a, co a corporate investor who operates traditional? Uh, fossil fuel plans and nuclear power stations. Mm -hmm. And and really, what Peter has done was, was to to pitch in a way saying, no, Inven and Chaz understand that the utilities need to change and they want to be part of that change um, and and do that step with us. Because effectively, that's what will happen is that, that companies like Sunbed and others will become utilities. Mm. We will be offering electricity to people. Mm. Um, and, and I think it was that, that mutual overlap in strategy which really then brought us together. Mm. And to Neil's point earlier about follow-on, what sort of discussion and agreement did you have about follow-on rounds? Was that, have you thought that far ahead? I can neither deny nor confirm this rumor. <laughs> 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 I thought but I'd let's ask. say we don't have that problem. I don't okay. think so. Okay, good, good. So, uh, Michael, for Siemens, what, how would you suggest that um, port, um, startups approach Siemens? in the first place? When should they start talking to you if they think there might be some synergy there? Um, I th uh, yeah, hanging up on, on your comment, I think it's, it's not bad to start early um, because it's, it's, yeah, you're not going to the counter and, and, and buying a, a good uh, in the moment. Mm -hmm. I think um, a lot is about relationship, um, understanding team, people, learning to know about each other. Um, also very important, for, of course, for, the, uh, for you guys. Um, because it's, it's a marriage for a couple of years, and um, there's good days and bad days, so you want to know the other. Mm. Um, I always encourage people to do this very early on, um, even if there is uh, just a rough planning on, on, um, on the financing, for example. There is, um, th it's, there's no burned ground if there's not a perfectly polished set of slides or whatever. I think it's important to get a, a first information quite early. Mm. Um, and... Um, we as Siemens are a strategic investor in the sense of that we want to invest or we invest in business partners and potential business partners. So um, to get the effect, not only giving the money, but also the leverage of the corporate, um, we, we need to go and find uh, a business unit sponsoring a deal. Um, to, and we also make them to have skin in the game, you can say, so mm -hmm. there's some mechanisms for that um, to, make, yeah, to really deliver this kind of, uh, of, of leverage by the corporate. That's the intention. Um, and Siemens is a fairly big animal, so close to 400,000 employees. Uh, it's difficult to find the right persons, of course, from the outside. Mm. So I think it's, it's pretty wise to uh, address a small team like the, the corporate venture team. Um, we are rather small, we know. Um, we, are, we are set up in a, in a context that we um, partner uh, like uh, small groups with certain divisions in order to really understand who are the key people there, what's, what's the strategy roadmap, what's the white spots on there, what are our guys in the operations looking for, and we can bring the, the right parties together. Mm. So it's almost like a scouting for, for the, it's, yeah. the business. Yeah. I think it's, it's pretty impossible doing this from the outside, except you, you're lucky to find the right person on, on some point, or you have some relationship. It's, mm. I think that's mm. for, that holds for a, a pretty big firm, of course. Right, okay. So you're a startup, and you're lucky enough that there's likely to be a check on the table. Neil, are there things at that point that people should watch out for in terms of term sheets and exit options, li liquid, liquidation preferences and all these sorts of things that come up, what, what would your advice be on those sorts of things? The um, venture capital term sheets are fairly standard, but corporates don't always use the standard term sheet. A lot of them do, especially if they have a, a really a venture fund that is arm's length, and they'll be using the standard term sheet. They'll take preference shares, they'll have a liquidation preference, um, it's something that you have to put up with. That means, um, as you all know, um, that they'll get their money back first. And so as a founder, that means that if you're exiting without hitting the um, um, sunlit uplands, as a founder, you get um, a, a much lower return because they'll be getting their money back. They'll be getting potentially um, uh, a coupon on top of that of, for no particularly good reason, 8% every year. Um, even when interest rates are at half of 1%, it's 8%, and when it's at 5%, it's 8%, and it shouldn't be. So there are some things that you should negotiate. And um, one of my clients um, negotiated out the, um, uh, the cumulative dividend 
of 8%, which after, with clean tech, after several years, 8% cumulative is, um, is a big number. And so that can be negotiated out. Liquidation preferences tend not to be able to. But you can keep the liquidation preference, for example, to one times. And if anybody wants further detail on that, then um, come and see any of us afterwards. Um, but it should be one times liquidation preferences. It should be weighted average, anti-dilution rights, etc. And the details matter um, for two reasons. One, because on an exit, unless it's at hundreds and hundreds of millions, it matters about the founder's returns. Um, and also matters because it scares off other later investors. If you've got too aggressive terms, if an early stage investor has taken too aggressive terms, then you kill the next round. So for example, if you have an overly uh, aggressive liquidation preference, it either puts off the next investor or they'll have to take something similar. So um, those sorts of terms, the term sheet is only two, three pages at the beginning, but each line matters much more than the, long, the hundreds of pages that you know, lawyers do at the end. Hmm. The term sheet really matters. Hmm. And, and what about um, corporates that, that want to put in sort of veto clauses and first rights of refusal and things like that? Is that valid for them to do it? Should you push back? Yeah, so um, most corporates, on if they're taking a stake over 25% or so, they will take liquidation preferences, etc. If they're taking 10%, they shouldn't get them. If they're not writing a check, this is, these are my opinions, by the way, but, you know, the... the um, jump in and tell me I'm wrong if, if the policies are different. But um, if they're not writing a big enough check, don't give them a preference right. And don't give them rights of first refusal, because if you do, you're um, cocking up an exit for, um, for, for later on. They will want negative control, though. They will want a list of, if they have a preference share, they will want a list of vetoes. But negotiate every line of those vetoes. Every single line of every single term sheet is negotiable. A VC say we never negotiate that and then find somebody who's negotiated seven deals with that VC and you'll find one where they have. Although um, a common exit route or the most common exit route is a trade sale, actually not many portfolio companies are acquired by the corporate that invested in them. Does that tie in with your experience, Michael? Have you, have you ever acquired any of your portfolio companies? We acquired quite a <coughs> quite a bit. So from just I'm looking at, at all the Siemens history, so uh, also with the communication activities, um, as we started off uh, our activities end of '98, something like this. Mm -hmm. I think we were number at roughly 10, 15 percent of the portfolio companies that we acquire, or not we, the corporate acquires, um, mm -hmm. Siemens acquires. Mm -hmm. I guess that's roughly yeah, that's like, like a standard yeah. in, in the, in the mm -hmm. industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, I think a lot of people think, oh, if I get an investment from a corporate, then that's a toe in the water they want to buy me later. But it doesn't seem to. Why is why do you think it's not more common? It's. I think that's that's just a. Uh, put the question the other way around. If if I'm a pure financial investor, uh, what I was before, and if I make my investment memorandum, and I think about, hmm, these will be my most likely acquirers, and then at the end of the day, who is really acquiring the company? Um, guess what? And quite sometimes, the, both lists do not match. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's uh, if, if you invest in an early stage, it's, it's quite some market development. So markets mm -hmm. change, there is, is ups and downs in markets, markets mm -hmm. shift, strategies shift. I think it's that's, um, tough to really predict um, who wants to acquire or not to acquire. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's, that's the, the basic reason, like, like for, <coughs> for any other VC mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Patrick, you so uh, By the way, we don't have any, any, any veto rights. And, uh, we perfectly understand it has to be balanced between us, the other investors, and the founders. If it's not there, it won't work. We mm -hmm. need to cooperate. Uh, secondly, if a company comes uh, and says, look, it would be great if Chess going to buy me, mm -hmm. okay? We don't invest. We, we, we want to invest in firms who believe in themselves, in their own business plans, and without any help of our strategic investor. If we can help in addition to that, that's great, nice <laughs> to have, and we will definitely do this. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but we don't want to see, why don't we hear sec on the second line from, from them, look, you know, chess is a great lot of money, maybe they should buy us in the first place, you know, we know they don't know what they're, you know, they, you know, okay. they're not sure what they're doing. So. Okay. It's the opposite, actually. Mm. It depends on how self-confident you are. Maybe you put in a clause in the, in the term sheet saying that you have first right of ref refusal to buy the corporate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah, ambitious. Mm. So do you, do well, you that happens, though. Yeah? I mean, that happens. Mm -hmm. and, and also, um, 
you know, a veto over doing strategic deals, joint development deals, licensing deals with the major competitor. And a lot of corporates naturally think that that is, um, that is good for the large corporate, but it actually isn't the best way to invest in my view, and that should be pushed back on. If you can push back on it, and most can, you should not give them those sorts of re veto rights. But we see that all the time. Not for um, corporate VCs that have been doing it for 10 years, but for new corporate VCs, they very often will, t will, um, will smother the, the companies and they'll ask for things that they would get on a joint venture. They think it's a joint venture deal. It's not a joint venture deal. It's not an M&A deal. It's not a financial investment either. It's different. Corporate VC is different, which is why global corporate venturing exists as a separate industry awards and symposium and, and magazine. It's different. So in a moment, I'm going to ask each of the panelists to come up with uh, two or three top tips. But uh, before I do that, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask? OK, well, keep thinking. And uh, at the end, you'll have another chance, I think. So top tip, who wants to start? For startups uh, <coughs> working with corporates. Top tips. Firstly, look for strategic alignment at the beginning. I think most conflicts uh, coming up later can be solved way before you even start talking about a term sheet, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, um, from our, our perspective, timing matters. In other words, we had, invest, we had VCs invest into our business first, and we deliberately took on the, the corporate investor later. That has... has had many, many benefits for us. Um, the corporate investor can see us as a more mature business with a business model which is working, which is, is, is more mature. At the same time, um, the VCs have set the, the ground rules of how everybody interacts. And those veto rights which a corporate VC might want to have are just not there and the VCs would also just not agree to them anyway. Um, if, unless the ticket is super huge, but mm -hmm. in normal circumstances they wouldn't. So it, it sets the ground rules. So my recommendation was uh, have have a, a corporate VC VC is uh, slightly later than than just a standard VC. Okay. Welcome. Just uh, hopping again on the special rights. So um, in, in my career of, of ten plus years, um, I think we, we 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 rarely are the single investor. Um, normal setup is really. Uh, peer financial VCs combined with corporate VCs, even more than one corporate VC if it's a later stage deal or a larger deal. Um, and I'm fully with you. I think um, there's, there's this kind of, of hygiene function. Um, it's, it's, it's standard term sheets. So I, I haven't experienced a lot of attempts um, to get special rights, I have to say. Um, on, the, on the top tips, so perhaps focusing a bit more on, on Siemens Venture as, as we want to really have this partnership between the business unit um, and uh, the portfolio companies, my recommendation would be think about a win-win situation. Um, so, of course, the, the obvious thing you will think about is what, what's your benefit of teaming up with a, a business unit uh, of a corporate, but also perhaps think about what, what can you offer um, so that there's a win-win coming up um, for, um, for this situation. I think that's a big help. Um, and the second point I would say is, um, um, yeah, be, 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 be proud of yourself. I think one, one uniqueness of uh, startup companies definitely is you're quick, you're fast, you're flexible. Um, and that's what normally uh, is very interesting for big corporates because if you want to team up and you have to do some kind of uh, adaptations or whatever to get on a, on a platform of a corporate, for example, um, that's a huge benefit um, to be agile and, and fast. Mm. Um, and if you don't overpromise, the, the, the corporate will, will definitely see this very agile, very fast uh, execution, and he will be very happy with this. Mm -hmm. What um, stage is the sort of sweet spot for you? Because some corporates are more interested in early stage than others. Where does Siemens stand on that? I have to give a two-part answer, I have to okay. say. Um, we, uh, typically, we, we um, invest in companies that have products ready, slash at least demonstrate us pretty far, uh, because a lot of our operations, they, they would struggle if I get them three guys in an idea and tell them in, in, yeah, in eight months or 12 months there will be a product. I think yeah. it's, um, that's, that's the reason for why we normally um, more uh, look at uh, typical Series B. Yeah. Having said that, we uh, started, uh, we call it Industry of the Future Fund, last year of 100 million um, US. 
Um, and we are looking in the industry automation or software for industry automation in this market environment, um, we go rather early. We really go Series A. Um, I did an investment, a cybersecurity company, seven guys, product not ready. Um, because this market is developing so fast, we, we just cannot afford waiting until the mm. companies are mm. developed there. Mm. And what's, what's hot for you? What sort of technologies, sectors are you most... Oh, that's, that's difficult to say uh, on, on the breadth of uh, what Siemens is active in. Mm. Um, so that's perhaps the third tip I would, uh, would encourage you. Don't, um, don't be shy. Just ask us. The, the venture team is not big. Um, a question, would this fall into... Would you project or your, your um, corporate, your, your startup fall in the, in the, in the interest um, of the corporate, uh, it's one phone call and, and you'll have some early feelings. Don't preclude some stuff you think this might be fitting or not. Because also our strategy has changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so we look, look quite a bit in industry automation software. Uh, we think security, cyber security is a very uh, important element mm -hmm. also for the, um, for the clean tech markets. Um, for the energy generation markets, to give some examples there. Um, we invested recently in, in um, additive manufacturing. That's uh, a key topic for us. Um, it's, it's fairly broad. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Answer. So I'll agree with all what was said. Maybe I should add, pick the right partner. Pick the right corporate fund. There are differences. Mm -hmm. Make sure uh, that, uh, that they decide independently check their portfolio, speak to the uh, firms which is in their portfolio and, and, and make sure that, that, that they, there is a good uh, chemistry, that it actually works and pick the right partner. Mm -hmm. as, as is always the good thing to be the right partner. So, and be confident, you know, don't, don't, you know, we are a corporate fund, but it does mean we are a corporation. Uh, so, so we take fast decisions and uh, uh, we have a nice team uh, and uh, uh, so just go for it and, and, and try to use as much as possible what the key investor can offer. Is mm -hmm. there is a pile of opportunities, just go ahead and grab it, pilot it, try it. Sounds good. Neil? Um, well, first, I, I'd certainly recommend corporates uh, as investors. Um, uh, they give you a quick no or they'll give you a lot of guidance. I called up on behalf of one of my clients that might be doing a deal. Um, it was a battery company. I asked Siemens... Um, whether they were interested in that, they said yes, it's, the deal's not ready yet, but they might have invested in competing technology, they might have said no, but they'll give you an answer really quickly. Um, in terms of tips, negotiate term sheets, keep corporates at arm's length. It's good for the corporates mm -hmm. because only 8 to 15% on Tim's statistics, only 8 to 15% will the buyer be that corporate, so the rest of the time they're the seller. It's in their interest, it's in the company's interest to keep them at arm's length. Um, they can sit on the board, but they can't swamp you. Um, one of the other issues and accusations against corporates is that they change their strategies, and some of them have. Average life of a corporate VC is three to four years, believe it or not. Um, and so you've got to, if you can, make sure that you are um, having them invest for the long term. Try to make sure that they will follow on. That's absolutely key. If they don't follow on, even if you don't need their money and you've got somebody else coming in, if they're not following on, the other investors don't like the deal. Because, hey, they're on your board. They invested. Why aren't they following? They must hate this company. What's wrong with it? So try to get them to follow on. There are some techniques called pay-to-play, et cetera, to, to do that. But you can negotiate every line off that term sheet. <laughs> don't wait until the lawyer's drafts of 100 pages land on your desk, it's too late. Because they'll say, you should have raised that in the term sheet. So negotiate the term sheet. Thank you, good advice. Uh, we're actually out of time for the lovely Alyssa comes up. So uh, just remains to thank Jan and thank the panel for an uh, interesting discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.